Hi, my name is Augustin Barian, and I'm going to present the first part of our work, Crypt Analysis of Fox Ciphers, by Gaetan Laurent, Nicolas David, and myself. The Fox Cipher framework was introduced by Andre Van Al in Azure Crypt 2019. A Fox Cipher outputs two cipher texts, C0 and C1, out of a single plain text and a key. It forms a family of authenticated block ciphers because the second cipher text can be interpreted as a map. It is efficient for very short messages as there are a lot of common operation between the computation of C0 and C1. They are constructed from block ciphers and tweakable block ciphers. There are two instances of this framework from now. There is a fork AES derived from AES and fork skinny from skinny. The plain text goes through RI rounds of block cipher, then the state is duplicated and it goes into R0 rounds of block cipher to output C0 and R1 rounds of uh, block ciphers to output C1. Note that uh, TK0 and TK1 are different tweaking material and TK0 corresponds to the base block cipher tweaking material while TK1 has been derived from the original tweaking material. This framework uh, gives a lot of freedom to the attacker as there are two safer texts and actually it needs to be carefully analyzed and this interested us. Um, the new attacker model is interesting because it gives three oracles to the attacker. The first one is the encryption and decryption of the first branch. So this is exactly the same as the base block cipher. So it has already been deeply studied and we will not focus on that uh, in our paper. The second uh, oracle is the encryption and decryption of the second branch. It differs from the first branch because TK1 is different from TK0. Actually TK1 uh, can be poorly generated. And our attack on Fox Kidney exploits a weakness in the generation of TK1. And third, uh, there is the reconstruction query. So out of uh, one ciphertext C0 and C1, we can ask for the corresponding ciphertext. Uh, this reconstruction query is interesting because it consists of R0 decryption rounds for, followed by R1 uh, encryption round. And actually this uh, implies a lack of diffusion in the middle round. And our attack on 4 ks exploits this fact. To illustrate this, let's look at the propagation of a single byte uh, input difference on two encryption rounds of AES versus one decryption, then one encryption round of AES. So in the first case, with probability one, we end up with a full active state, whereas uh, with probability two to the power minus 24, we end up with only one active byte in the second case. So first I will describe for KS and then I will present uh, our new attacks. So as you all probably know, AES is a block cipher introduced by Diamond and Richmond in 1999 that won the AES competition. It is composed, the round function of AES is composed of four operations, add key, which adds the round key to the state, sub bytes, which applies an S box on each byte of the state, shift row, that shifts each, each row by a certain offset, and mix column that multiplies each column by a linear invertible matrix. KSUBC was designed by Jean and Al and presented in Azure Group 2019. It's a tweakable block cipher derived from AES 128 with an extra input, a 64-bit tweak. It has 10 rounds like AES 128, but a lower security margin, as most attacks on AES 128 can be extended by one run on KSUBC. Um, the only difference between KSUBC and AES 128 is that the tweak is XORed to the first two rows of the state at each key addition. So the tweak is controlled by the attacker. So this gives some uh, free, more freedom to the attacker. For KES is based on KSUBC with R0 equal R1 equal RI equal five. So there is no, um, the, the branches are exactly half of the cipher. So there is a loss of diffusion, but uh, no more round added. 
So what are the existing attacks on 4K ES44? Uh, Banik and Al in ACNS 2019 proposed a reflection differential. This is a truncated differential uh, the, which exploits the lack of diffusion in the middle round. The total uh, probability of the differential is two to the power minus 64. And this means that uh, if you have uh, an active column in input, you end up with only an active column uh, in output with probability two to the power minus 64. So structures of two to the power 32 plain texts are enough. And the attack is very cheap as two to the power 35 encryptions are needed. However, it's not extendable directly to full 4 k uh, If we add one run at the beginning and one run at the end, uh, the complexity grows too much to be uh, a right attack. So our idea uh, was to do another reflection differential with a lower probability, but to attack only with keys. So we suppose that the key has zero in diagonal bytes of k5 plus k11. So this corresponds to the key in the middle round. So that middle round pass with probability one. Also, we generate twin pulse p and p prime, so that if p uh, passes the differential, then p prime also, but with a much higher probability, as p and p prime has some common um, some common inputs at the beginning. And so if the differences in P collides, collapses, then the difference of P prime also. Um, P and P prime are generated from couples of 96 bit vectors U and V. So a single structure can generate both pairs simultaneously. We first guess uh, the first byte of K10. And with that guess, the probability of the full differential is two to the power minus 16, 116. And if P passes a differential, then P prime also, but with a much higher probability, two to the power minus 13. And this is because it passes all the first rounds with probability one, if P passes it also. How do we construct this wind pairs? So we build a structure of 96 bit vectors u. Then we compute p0 u, p1 u, p0 prime u, and p1 prime u. We filter the output difference uh, simultaneously. And if a pair passes the, has the right uh, output difference, and if it passes the differential, then because of the last rounds, we can deduce some information on the key. And if this information deduced is compatible between uh, p and p prime, uh, we keep the pairs, else uh, we reject them. So this leads to an additional filter. So this attack breaks the two to the power 96 keys and the complexity of the attack in data is two to the power 74.5, in time is two to the power 75 and in memory is two to the power 59.5. Um, we have two more, uh, two more attacks, actually. Um, the second one has a different wiki hypothesis. Uh, we only suppose that k5 plus k11 has one zero diagonal byte, which happens with probability 2 to the power minus 6. Um, we can perform this attack by rotating the columns, thus attacking four times more keys. And in total, we can break 2 to the power 124 keys. The probability of the differential of the differential is 2 to the power minus 137. And the probability of the second pair passing the differential if the first pair uh, passes is 2 to the power minus 34. So the final complexity in time is 2 to the power 114, which is enough. Um, our final attack has no hypothesis on K5 plus K11. We have to add an intermediate filter because the output filter and the compatible key information filter are not enough. Um, the probability of the differential is 2 to the power minus 144. And the probability of the second pair passing it is 2 to the power minus 41. Uh, eventually, the complexity in time is 2 to the power 125. 
So to conclude with 4KES, uh, 4KES is based on KSUBC, which is uh, already less secure than AES 128. Um, and the difference uh, in security between the 4KES 5.5 and KSUBC is even higher. Uh, because of this reconstruction query. So the Frog Cipher authors should be aware of that. We now move on to another section focused on Fork Skinny crypt analysis. Fork Skinny is based on this block cipher Skinny, which is an SPN cipher inspired by the AES and first introduced in crypto 2016. Its internal state is represented by a 4 by 4 matrix, which is either 64 or 128 bits. There are three different, different versions of Forskini, Forskini NN, Forskini N2N, and Forskini N3N. All these versions uh, differ uh, from the size of the tweaking material compared to the internal state. The round function of Skinny describes as follows. First, there is a subset operation where you apply next box of each of the 16 cells. Then there is an add constant operation where we add a constant to the internal state. Then there is an out round tweaking where we add tweaking material to the two first row of the internal state. Then shift row operation, like in AES, and a mixed call of operation, uh, which is uh, described by the circuit in the picture over there. When adding the tweaking schedule, uh, first there is an extraction operation that consists in extracting the two first row and transferring it to a round function. Then there is a permutation, which is applied to each of the 16 cells, and then an LFSR. Something to re, uh, apply to two first row. Something to remark regarding the permutation that it globally swaps the two first row and the two bottom rows. Hence, if we place ourselves in a related tweaking and we choose one precise cell in which we put some di difference, its difference, this difference will be uh, extracted and transferred to the round function every two rounds. Fork Skinny is a block cipher built on Skinny. There are different versions of it. And today we will be inter uh, interested in building an attack for, uh, for Skinny 128 to 156 that have initial round equal to 20, 21 and, uh, and fork round equal, both equal to 27. The fork rounds are, uh, the number of fork rounds is greater than the number of initial rounds uh, to weaken reconstruction queries. Fork Skinny has been submitted to the NIST and still in, in round two. If you want to build a uh, cryptanalysis for Fox Skinny, we will first look at some Skinny cryptanalysis, and especially at Skinny end-to-end -end cryptanalysis. So we'll look at some uh, previous work uh, from Sadeki from the Intosk paper that built uh, a latent tweaky attack uh, using impossible differential and that achieved 23 rounds. This attack uses some property of the Twitty schedule and in particular, some property of the LFSR, which is that the LFSR to its power 15 has some fixed point. Indeed, there is some delta, a byte that LFSR to its power 15 of delta is equal to itself. So this actually has some consequences, which is that the, in the end-to-end -end scenario, the tweaking material will cancel itself every 30 rounds. So at some precise round, the tweaking material cancel itself because delta plus, plus LFSR of delta is equal to zero. The round before is also blank because there is no difference introduced because it's every two rounds and the round after the cancellation will also be zero. Hence, three consecutive rounds uh, no difference will be introduced in the internal state. But in the case of fork cipher, we can actually do more than three consecutive blank rounds because we have some unique thing happening when we cipher from P to C1, which is called the tweaky jump. Indeed, when we cipher, uh, when we look at the queries from P to C1, the tweaky uh, schedule. Uh, will actually do some round that will be skipped. Uh, if we look at the picture here, the rounds achieved in TK0 that, we, that are in blue will be skipped. Hence, if we have some odd uh, number of, uh, 
of rounds for C0, we can actually have two consecutive blank rounds because the blue part will be skipped. But in the case of N to N, uh, skinny N to N, with uh, 27 jumping rounds, uh, jump of uh, tw 27 rounds, what we can do is have six consecutive blank rounds. And this is how we achieve it. Just before the, fork to, uh, the forking point, we put our three blank rounds from uh, was described in the previous work. Then we have our 27 jump, and we will have actually, once again, the three blank rounds. And this is because the, LF, uh, the tricky uh, schedule uh, is uh, have a period of 30. So in the end, we, we obtain six blank rounds. And with this, we have everything we need to build our attack on fork skinny. So we will target Foxini 138, 156, place ourselves between P and C1, where it's a tricky jump, use the reduced version with R0 still equal to 27, like in the NIST submission, and we will reduce both R, I, and R1. Uh, our attack will be mostly the same as in uh, previous work, but this time we will have three more blank rounds due to the tricky jump Hence, our attack would be three uh, rounds longer. This is our impossible pattern. As we can see, we have three blank rounds before the forking point and then three blank rounds after the forking point. The rest of the impossible pattern is based and built from previous work. Regarding the characteristic, we have our 18 round distinguisher and then we have, we have uh, three rounds before and five rounds after. And uh, the correction of this uh, is, is basically based on previous work. So now the, 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 um, the characteristic is an adaptation of previous work. So uh, then this concludes our part for uh, Fox Kitty. So we have our attack at the Chief 26 round, and in the, when we have 256 uh, in uh, bits of key, and when we have uh, 128 bits of key and 128 bits of tweak. Uh, we have we built an attack in the paper on 24 rounds. As a conclusion, we can say that the design of Fork Cipher allows the attacker to mount attack using three types of queries. The first one from P to C0 corresponds to the underlying cipher, therefore there is no security leak. When the attacker uh, use, uh, uses queries from P to C1, there is tweak, the tweaky jump, hence there is security leak because there is an expected tweaky schedule behavior. And when we are asking uh, queries from cipher to cipher, there also is security leak because there is a lack of diffusion. Thank you for your attention.